Thank you, Jan, Rashida, and, and welcome to worship this morning. Good to see everybody. And uh, so now we have two options for worship. We have our lawn chair. Y'all must be concert goers and fireworks watchers. I, yeah, they've got their lawn chairs lined up. And good to see everybody in the car. Everybody find it 87.9 A-OK. Good. All right. Uh, good to be back in worship today and uh, look for uh, some continued uh, improvements to our sanctuary outside. We're going to be doing some decorating with the ladies and things and dressing this up. And just really nice outside today. I, ho I hope you all are enjoying it, but it's beautiful outside today. And so uh, we have uh, some news that will come forward a little bit later. We're working with admin, had a great meeting with Gail this week, and we will uh, be communicating just different things that we can do, things we're going to postpone doing, things like that. We'll be talking about that next Sunday. Uh, so at this time, let's look forward to worship together. And Flo, lead us, if you would, in our call to worship. Jan and Rashida this morning are using their holy hands to play our hymns of praise and hymn of preparation for us. And the first one, if you don't have the words in front of you, be reminded that the words are, Come thou fount of every blessing, tune our hearts to sing thy grace. And then the last phrase says, Here's my heart, O Lord, take and seal it seal it for thy court above. Thank you, Jan and Rashida, and uh, that was well done. 
And so uh, also this morning as we come to our time of prayer concern, I uh, want to make a mention. We have uh, some visitors back with us, Debbie and Joe McHaley. McHaley. And uh, that's a great name. I don't hear that one every day. So good to see y'all. Good to have you with us. And uh, did, uh, mention, I want to mention to you Carolyn Simpson. I did speak to her this morning, and she certainly misses her church family. Uh, but she knows where everything is at the moment. She'll be in recovery for about three months, but she has a very positive attitude. Let's keep her in our prayers. So we want to remember Carolyn Simpson. Lord, hear our prayer. We also have Wanda Jackson. Uh, Becky has asked prayer for health issues. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, Tom Lowe. Uh, Flo has brought forward with health issues. Lord, hear our prayer. Glenda Sweat, uh, Angela Crosser has asked prayer waiting for a liver transplant. Lord, hear our prayer. And uh, Tom Gay, uh, Anna George has brought him forward. He's suffering with Parkinson's. Lord, hear our prayer. Kathy uh, has been asked for prayer by the Briners, and that is for breast cancer. Lord, hear our prayer. Terry Gaines uh, is also our uh, uh, Sharon and Bill, and that is also cancer treatment. Lord, hear our prayer. And uh, uh, let's remember Ms. Jesse Lundy in recovery and rehab. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And gracious God, today is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing. We're rejoicing because each one who's gathered here this morning is not alone. Through the presence and power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, we have life, and we have hope, and we have peace. And Lord, we also want to be a beacon. We want to do as you did. We want to go about doing good. That was uh, what Scripture tells us over and over. Uh, Jesus Christ went about doing good. So we have opportunities, especially now, uh, to do so. Help us then to do this uh, faithfully. Uh, bless our admin, Gail, as she leads us as we work towards those things which we can do uh, during the pandemic. And we pray for a swift resolution, Father, uh, that will be good for all people. And we ask your name to be glorified today as we come together to worship and to hear and receive the word. May it be grafted deep in our hearts. May you change us and do that very delicate heart surgery that comes from the Holy Spirit for each one. And so we pray with one heart, one mind, and one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he 
called, he also justified. And those who be justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for his all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, born of death, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. So, in all these things, we are more than conquered through him who loves us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor power, nor height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, be to God. God. And this morning, the message will not be long. You believe that? I'm sure. <laughs> the message will not be long, but it is uh, the conclusion of our sermon series for July. Uh, we've had a great, uh, great first month. Uh, appreciate all of you, not just your work. Uh, your work is second. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of workers, good workers. Uh, but the community of faith is what we're all about, and being the people of God. And so God is good. We've been discussing uh, justice and liberty for all, grace for all, faith for all. And today we conclude with the thing that underlies everything, love for all. And so would our world be so much better when you go downtown and you run into people? Would it be so much better if every person that you encountered uh, was busy living by their faith? instead of by their smarts, uh, as we discussed with Jacob. Uh, if every person that you met was concerned with doing justice and loving mercy, uh, walking humbly with God, instead of seeing how they could maybe accomplish their own will, uh, using others to advance what they think is good for them. Uh, we get plenty of examples of that, but how would it be if every person that you met was concerned with justice, mercy, and humility? preferring another as better than themselves. Would the world be so much the better if by living God's way, all people came to experience true freedom and liberty through Jesus Christ? And when we do that, we also come to the understanding of how important it is that every human being come to that same place. Uh, for this alleviates all the misery of the world. 
we can have as the days of heaven upon earth when people come together in faith in Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, as you know, misery loves company. Like cancer, it seeks to spread. Misery is the devil's workshop. And I want to say to you, God is the God of all comfort. He's not called the God of all misery. He is the God of all comfort. You and I are his people. We of all people should demonstrate the love, the joy, the peace, the comfort that we have in Jesus Christ. And so think of when you encounter others, and then of course we have to look in the mirror. What about when they encounter me? Uh, you know, um, came through Starbucks the other morning, got a cup of coffee, and there were two Middle Eastern men, and they were standing up at the counter and ordering and could hardly understand them. But as I left, one of them turned to me with his mask on, and he said, Allah. And I thought, you know what? I got out to the car and I started Googling and I found, how do you say Jesus loves me in Aramaic? Amen? Because <laughs> I don't know what he meant by saying that to me. And, 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 you know, maybe to bother me. I don't know. But I'd rather hear Jesus loves me. And so what are people hearing from you? God does love every person. Those who are uh, in Christ and those who should be, who need to be, which is every person. And so let us be the cure. Let us be the solution. The love of God transcends everything. What we think we know. What uh, people of other world's religions think they know. We do know. We have peace that settles deep in our soul. It is proven out through the life that we live. Christians who go through times of adversity, which is everybody in the church, come to show forth their faith because God refines us as silver is tried by the fire. We have the greatest gift, which is love. And so as we conclude, and, and just by the way, next uh, month, the month of August, our sermon series will be the presence of God. Uh, so thankful that God is near to us at all times. And so all of the things that we've been discussing flow, and they form in the heart of God's love. That is the gift of justice and liberty and faith, grace. All of this comes from a heart of love. Now, I find many people that we encounter and that we meet that don't act loving, that seem to be miserable, have lacked examples of loving people in their lives. And uh, whether it was childhood and, and family situations or other situations in their life, they've come to, to lose trust. You and I are the rebuilders of the wall. You and I, through the love of Christ, can mend brokenhearted people. God binds up the brokenhearted and heals all their wounds. You and I have the solution. Let us live up to that high calling. We begin looking at that passage that William read a little while ago from Romans, and we understand that it's all about the unconquerable love of Jesus Christ. But as we look at it, we also see the beginning of the passage right there. It's about prayer and prayer support. This morning, I want you to feel the prayer support that you have when you go to the prayer closet. What connects us to God and His love? Nothing works faster and better than time spent with Him in conversation. Now, there's a song, Flo, you probably know it, and maybe we have some folks one day will get up and sing it to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He will, I'm not going to say it, don't worry. Uh, he will hear your cry. He will answer by and by. That's fact, folks. That's fact. So what's troubling your soul is a simple matter of the prayer closet. Do you spend time there today? Romans 8.26 does not let me off the hook for prayer. I'm called to pray. So much so, pray without ceasing. And so... Uh, but how much more boldness, how much more confidence do you have? And how much more often will you return to the prayer closet when you remember the support that's already there for you? For see, we see that the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, intercedes for you and me and every person through intercession, prayer, groans and utterances that cannot be understood in words. I need somebody. You ever have one of those days? I need somebody groaning on my behalf sometimes. You see what I'm trying to say. Someone who is God. Someone who is in tune with 
the Trinity, someone who knows the mind of the Spirit, someone who knows the will of God for every circumstance. We go to the prayer closet and sometimes we avoid it because we don't know what to pray. All we know is that, Lord, things are a mess. This is a situation. This is a concern. This is a burden. This is a hurt for me, for this loved one, for this family member, this church member, this community member. We have burdens and they're too deep for words. And so, unfortunately, we linger. We don't go where the answer and the solution is every time. God says, come. There's love waiting there and a multitude of wisdom and omnis omniscient and omnipotent power. You know, the good thing about the love of God, you can be a superstar, you know, and, and everything else, but you'll notice superstars are always surrounded by a lot of talented people. Just like if, if I do any good at all today, it's because of people like Patty and Dick that, that take care of the, the business of the church. You see what I'm saying? We support one another. But see, when you go to the prayer closet, you should think of yourself as a prayer superstar. God will hear you, and he's already there before you interceding. God carries your concern. He needs you to come. He wants you to come, and you will find great solutions and great overcoming boldness. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Look out to the world, and it takes just a moment. I see need. Look out to the church, I see need. Look out to your family, I see need. But always be steadfast looking into the prayer closet, into the face of God, into that which is too deep for us to explain, farther than we can go. But God, by His grace and the support of the Holy Spirit, makes prayer worthwhile. Have you been today? Will you go this week? Will you do it every day and pray without ceasing? God is all sufficient. He doesn't need us, therefore, to overload him with information. Sometimes we stumble into the prayer closet and, and we begin to bludgeon God with all the facts. Is it? Lord, do you know what so-and-so is doing? Do you know what's happening in so-and-so's life? And we want to bludgeon God with facts that he already knows. Instead of saying, Lord God, I bring you spaghetti, but I look for your resolution. I look for your peace. God is a loving God. He's a faithful God. And he has all power to back up his love. If you have no power, nothing else you have matters. God has the power to do exactly what he's going to do. According to a good, pleasing, and perfect will of God, he'll get it done. How much more encouragement do we need to spend time simply talking to God? God will get it done. The Bible teaches us who can stay his hand. Nobody can stop him. Uh, we like to watch superstar athletes uh, and other high performers, and we like to look at what sometimes looks like near perfection in their performance and their abilities. We like to be amazed. We like to see that higher level. And here's the fact. Uh, us at our best are weakness, frail creatures of dust, but with God, Omnipotence is perfect power. Thank goodness that God is both loving and merciful, loving and powerful. It all works together for the good of his people. Prayer is something we've got to stop leaving out. And so Jesus calls us to come not just bringing facts, not bringing troubles, but bringing the attitude, God, I'm going to hear from you. God, you will take care of this because you've already told me to pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. We don't go to the prayer closet because we're not sure we're going to get our will. We're not sure we're going to get our way. And so we linger without confidence. What you want, what I want, at the end of the day, doesn't matter. What God wants for us is the best for us. Can you trust him at that level? There's great examples of answered prayer. We're happy when we find ourselves praying the very will of God. Many times, God will answer your prayer. You'll come to the closet. You'll know the need. You'll present it to God, uh, presenting your prayers and petitions with thanksgiving. And you know what? God will answer a prayer. But I find in my life, as many times as I've gone and immediately received an answer, when God has answered while I was yet speaking, I found I was praying in accordance with the will of God because I had been in prayer before. I was staying in the place. I knew what to ask. And God answered quickly. Jesus said he always did 
what pleased the Father. As you and I stay in communication, stay in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we will only ask for those things that are loving, those things that are wise, and uh, God will lead us in the way that we present our requests. Could there be another promise for us? God, the Holy Spirit, supports me in prayer, praying perfectly for me, but I'm also supported with that administrative guarantee. The Word of God, verse 28, Romans, God works all things together for good. We depend on Him administratively, and He gives us that guarantee. What uh, I think of Patty and Dick down here serving time in the military, or should I say serving time in the military? That may not be the right thing to say. They spent time serving in the military. There, there we go. And as they were serving in the military, and Patty, I know you were in administration, how important was it to be surrounded by competent people doing good work? God says, you're surrounded by perfection. I am pleading your case on your behalf, and I have the power and the purpose to get it done. Now, here's something I want to trouble you with this morning. I want to ask you this question. Does God respond to need? Or does God respond to prayers of faith? I find that there are many needs in the world all over the place today. And I don't always feel like God's moving. I don't see him just jumping in. Because God sent out the word. God calls us to prayer. But I say this. God says this in James. You have not because you ask not. Folks, I just want to lay it out there because I'm, I'm really weary with people that are constantly without when they say they're a Christian. We are not a people without. We have. We have the abundance to the overflow to meet the needs of the neighbor next door. That's the gift of God in the prayer closet. Oh, we need to be mighty prayer warriors. We need to pray with the confidence that God is with us praying, knowing the mind of the Spirit interceding on our behalf and administratively working it out and so that's why many times while we are yet speaking he hears us he answers us what a sweet sweet holy spirit working on our behalf so what kind of love is this god's love is perfect his will is made perfect through his omniscient omnipotent power now it's where free will joins God's will. That's prayer, folks. It's where free will joins God's will. When you say, Lord, I'm praying, help me to pray according to the mind of the Spirit. Help me to pray according to your will. Then present your petition with boldness. Come to the throne of grace. God hears. Now, at our best, we will get it wrong. At our best, we won't always understand. At our best, we can't see everything God's doing. We can't see 2% of what God is actually doing day by day. But we should come boldly with confidence that He is doing and He wants to do. His eyes are roaming through the earth, earnestly seeking those whom He may strongly support. And Jesus uh, already speaks to us about this. Uh, ask and you shall receive. James tells us, you have not because you ask not. Go to the prayer closet today. And so I ask you to consider to pray for yourself and then to pray for others. Bring all confessions to God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Thank God for forgiveness. Thank God for the answer to your prayer before it happens. If it be healing, it will be healing. If it is grace to endure to his greater purpose, it will be grace to endure. God is glorified in the prayers of his people. And he takes pleasure in his people remember this when you go to the prayer closet god is not nearly as interested in making messages as he is messengers you are a messenger of the gospel of christ he has a great place for you in the community here in hopewell in the community of faith and outside in that community people are looking for things that are real every day even someone in a grocery store or wherever you may be and they may not seem to have a lot of care about anything. It's sort of like Misery Loves Company is written on their t-shirt. And as you see that person, you can be sure. If you spent time in the prayer closet, you might have the kind word readily available 
that might transform that person's life. People are looking, even when they don't appear to be. People are seeking grace, faith, justice, liberty, and most of all, love. Oh, for heaven's sake, the church is a demonstration of the love of Christ. God also brings us glory. God brings us glory. That makes everything else work out. God's sun shines from the inside out. God's people do the same. We shine from the inside out. That's the glory of God. Jesus said, I've given them of my glory. I ask you to let him do that. I ask you to think about the fact that, that, that Jesus speaks of glory as something he's already given to us. We think in terms of gospel songs that tell us about glory one day. God said in the word of God that he's given us his glory now. The Greek word for the word glory is doxa. Doxa. Jesus did not say, I will give them the glory in John 17 that you have given me. He said, quote, I have given to them. The glory, Father, that you've given to me, I have given to them. You have it. You have it today inside your heart. Christ's glory rests in you. you. Say, well, I don't really see it a lot in my life. That's because you're not spending time in the prayer closet. God is waiting to shine through. Glory rests in your heart. Why did Jesus give us that glory? There's three important purposes. That we may all be one. We use the word fellowship freely. We use it sometimes to the point we forget what it really means. We have a fellowship hall. Uh, when you work at a company, they don't have afterglows and they don't have fellowships. They have uh, get-togethers, whatever. But in church, we use this word. It it's generally means to congregate and have something to eat. seems to be the main thing. We've lost that sense. The Greek word for fellowship in the Bible is koinonia. Koinonia. Let me explain koinonia. Some of you have tasted koinonia. Koinonia is fellowship where you are one with the body of Christ in a way... Oh, you can't pass it by. It's got to be, you got to be in church. You've got to be in church. And so I urge you, taste and see the love of Christ. Taste and see the glory of the Lord. You know, you look for restaurants that are packed in with cars. Uh, I don't want to go to one that's got two cars in the parking lot, do you? And so it is that people are drawn to good eats. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Do it for yourself and then... You won't help but to bless another. Jesus gave us that glory so that we may all be one, koinonia. That in being one, the world may believe that God sent Jesus Christ into the world to save sinners. They will not know us any other way. I could stand down there and argue with a Muslim about Jesus Christ versus Allah. That's fruitless. That gets us nowhere. The love of Christ is for every soul. St. Augustine said it like this, O oh God, thou hast created our hearts restless until they find rest in you. They will not find rest until they find it in the very love of Jesus Christ. And so thirdly, that the love with which the Father has loved the Son may be in us. This is why he gave us glory. We find that word koinonia, three passages, Acts 2.42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and koinonia, fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. 1 John 1, 3, that we have seen and heard and we proclaim also to you that so you too may have fellowship with us. Real fellowship comes from glory. And then also Philippians 3, 10. Now this is a different use of the word koinonia, but so much the same. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may koinonia his sufferings share in his suffering koinonia is sharing the life of christ folks paul said when i'm suffering i'm sharing the very life of christ as he suffered before me and now he suffers with me that's why the word says when you've done it under the least of one of these my brethren you have done it to me this is where God lives. This is where things really are. God is connected, but we stay disconnected. I urge you this week, get in the prayer closet. You've got to have the glory of God. Right now, the world needs us 
to be full of the glory of Christ. And oh, Father God, we confess that the circle of love is broken whenever there is alienation, whenever there is misunderstanding, whenever there is insensitivity or a hardening of the heart. Through God's grace, we are forgiven by the mercy of our Creator, through the love of Christ, and in the power of the Spirit, let us rejoice and be glad. Glory to God, and amen. Amen. Um.